In London, the royal couple launched an appeal for refugees in Cyprus. Now, are you officially still the king and queen of Greece now that the constitution has been returned? Well, at the moment, the question is uh, that my wife is uh, trying to do everything in her power to help the Cypriot people. And um, we have a, a concern for their plight. And this is what uh, my wife is trying to, to get to at the moment. In other words, you don't want to comment at this stage on your position in Greece? Well, this is not the issue at the moment. Would you like to return to Greece, then? Of course. What about yourself? Obviously. It's our home. In Greece, a caretaker government was in place, led by a conservative, Constantine Kanaman Lys. Democracy had returned, but would the king? The issue was to be put to the people in a referendum. I believe that a crown democracy offers the Greek people continuity, stability, and um, as you know, uh, my title is today, and will be on the 9th if the Greek people decide that they want to have a crown democracy, King of the Hellenes. But King Constantine had been away for seven years of dictatorship. Banned from returning to campaign, he tried to reach his people through television appeals. Come polling day, the royalists rallied. Constantine Kalamandis was now the elected prime minister. Andreas Papandreou was now leading the socialist opposition. Neither had an interest in the return of the king. Inevitably, the results went against him. In 1974, nearly 70% voted for a presidential republic. The king was deposed. It was a referendum he has never fully accepted as valid. Do you think, sir, that the Greek people believe in a royal family? I, I can tell you that in 1974, uh, a big majority voted for a republic. The means and ways of that uh, referendum is another story, but uh, the facts are there. How they feel about it now is, um, is something I really have no idea about. You're watching Sky News. Life in exile has continued in London for the Greek royal family in a house in Hampstead. Mr. Lena Scott, Your Majesty. Hello. Good afternoon. It's nice to see you Did you again. find it easily? Or? It's a place where connections with the British royals are on display. This looks like um, an unfinished painting by the Prince of Wales, is that right? Yes, but well, I think he might think that it is actually finished. Uh, he, uh, he did this one um, on his honeymoon. He was passing Crete with the Britannia, and as he was passing this cove, he painted it, and um, he sent it to me as a sort of memento of going to Greece. Mm -hmm. This is a favorite of mine because it was done before the turn of the century and you can just see on top of the trees there uh, my house in Corfu mm -hmm. called Moriopo where my daughter was born and also Prince Philip and his sisters were born there. And so it's a very nice painting. That's of course the royal connection, isn't it? It's the closeness of your families because of course Prince Philip is part of the Greek royal family. That's right. He's the Prince of Greece. His uh, father was one of the younger brothers of my grandfather, King Constantine. Mm -hmm. and, uh, his mother was uh, the sister of Lord Mountbatten and also the sister of the Queen of Sweden. And you share, the two of you, a love of sailing. I know that you won a gold medal in the Olympic Games. Oh, well, that's an awful long time. Yes, I know, you did. <laughs> that, was, that was for sailing. King Constantine is cousin um, to the Duke of Edinburgh uh, and related to all the crowned heads of Europe. His sister is the Queen of Spain. His wife's sister is the Queen of Denmark. And Her Majesty, Queen Elizabeth, is godmother to one of his daughters. So it's, all sort of, it's important, you know, though, isn't it? It's important within the family to have well, it's, that kind uh, of you know, it's, uh, it's nice because it keeps the family together and then, you know... Yes, but unfortunately, families don't stay together, it's, uh, it seems. There's a photograph here of the christening of the Princess of Wales with... Um, is that William? That's William, yes. And you're his godparent? Yes, the poor fellow. <laughs> but um, it, was, uh, it was quite an amazing occasion and he was uh, quite a loud little baby. <laughs> That was 1982, the year King Constantine became godfather to Britain's future king. But recent times had not been kind. The year before, the socialists had gained power in Greece, and the king's mother, Queen Frederica, had died. He was allowed back for her funeral. This little photograph here, 
Yeah. Is, is the last time you went back to Greece? That's the last time I went back to Greece at a very sad time when my mother died. And all my family and I, we went back for a few hours uh, to bury her in the area where all my family are buried in our property. Mm -hmm. And uh, the government at the time was very worried because they heard that a lot of people were coming. So they said that, you know, it would be better if I didn't spend the night. The Greek royal family has continued to thrive. There are now five children, three grown up and two born in London. The youngest, Philippos, born seven years ago. His christening was one of the biggest gatherings of European royals in years. The Princess of Wales returned the favour and became a godparent. One thing that saddens me a lot, one thing that I miss a lot, it's not sitting on a throne or being clapped or booed or whatever happens to heads of state because of the circumstance of our life, of the dictatorship and then the, the, uh, is that I didn't uh, see my children growing up in Greece and seeing the background to their whole heritage. In June 1989, a possible way home emerged. After eight years in power, Andreas Papandreou and his socialist government fell. The following spring, the Conservatives won government and Constantine Mitsotakis became Prime Minister. Then a deal was struck. The king was permitted to retrieve some of his possessions from Greece. He settled a one and a quarter million pound tax bill. The way was clear, the time had come. You know that by going back to Greece for the first time since your mother's funeral, you're going to create something of a stir. A lot of questions are going to be asked and raised about your return. I suppose that's true. Um, my hope is that there won't be a big stir. I suppose there will be some uh, reaction uh, in favour and some reaction uh, against it. Why is it that one section, it seems, listening to you of the Greek population support you, and yet there is another section which is so vehemently against you? I hope it's not anything that I personally have done, and I, I, I don't know that it's uh, personalised, but there are people who feel very strongly against the institution of a constitutional monarchy. What I'm interested in is that now, as a private citizen, to be able to go back to my country and uh, live there freely or travel there and come back. If they are um, personalizing it, uh, I have to admit that I think it's a hell of a lovely waste of time. From my own point of view, I think if I had been made king of a country and had to leave, I would want to go back as their king. Yes, but <laughs> I'm not made like that, I'm sorry. You truly don't feel that no, way? No, uh, I mean, if the Greek people decided that they want to have a constitutional monarchy back again, and they wanted me to do it, I would do it. There's no question about that. But I don't think that that's what's coming up. It's not on the agenda. It's not what the people desire, and it's not what I'm going to try and do. August the 9th, 1993. The day King Constantine had longed for. The family gathered at Farnborough Airfield in Hampshire. The king's oldest children, Princess Alexia, Crown Prince Pavlos, and Prince Nicolas. His sister, Princess Irene, Queen Anne-Marie, and the two youngest children, Princess Theodora and Prince Philippos. Two planes were standing by, one a royal jet lent by King Hussein of Jordan. In royal fashion, the king and queen travelled separately, so did their heirs. The news would soon be out, Greece's ex-king was on his way back. The plans had been kept secret. Any prior warning of the king's return would have allowed time for organized opposition. Like her father, Princess Alexia is a keen sailor, accustomed to charting her own way through difficult waters. She looks like, a, like an old fisherman. <laughs> As we flew into Greek airspace, the tension mounted. By now, the Greek authorities would know he was coming. What happens if they turn around and say the plane shouldn't land? What will you do then? Uh, then we'll have to consult the pilot and see how much fuel we have and see what happens next. It's not an option, though, as far as you're concerned. I don't think so. Landing at Thessaloniki was symbolic. His grandfather, Constantine I, arrived here in 1913 when the city was liberated from the Turks. Eighty years on, the arrival of Constantine II was another personal triumph. Maybe. So landed. We landed. Yes. Happy. Maybe. Sanazito, 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 Sanazito.